Well, here at DesignCon, I'm here, to, I'm here to welcome Lee Ratliff from Omdia. Welcome, Lee. Thank you. So tell me what you do at Omdia. So I'm a, I'm a technology analyst. I cover uh, wireless connectivity primarily for the IoT, but uh, uh, extending to other uh, applications as well. So talk about connectivity. What's the state of that today? So connectivity is a real interesting area because uh, it's, it's really growing quite rapidly today. Um, uh, prices are getting to the point where co connectivity can be added to just nearly any application um, and kind of uh, in many cases like in the IOT we're adding connectivity and we're able to uh, reach isolated devices that in the past haven't really been able to contribute data so um, in IOT applications so in some cases, connectivity can be added to a device for as little as a dollar, uh, depending on the type of connectivity in the application. And so it's really, it's really booming right now. Um, there's really quite a bit going on. So you're talking really about connecting things to each other, correct? Yes. Yeah. N to, to each, yeah, to each other, to other, to other devices. In some cases, it may be like smartphone accessories. Uh, in some cases, it may be. Uh, machine to machine communication in an industrial setting or enterprise or retail just about any kind of application so how did it get, get here did it evolve or just one day bang everyone said hey we should connect a lot of things oh it's it's definitely evolved over the years um, wire, wireless connectivity is really reaching a good point of maturity so that um, depending on the application and the technology wireless technology can be really robust and reliable today uh, if you're choosing the right technology for the right application. And so uh, wireless, of course, has a history of uh, a lot of people perceive wireless as being unreliable. And there's some good reason for that. In the, in the past, wireless technology hasn't been as sophisticated or ro as robust as it is today. And so um, in the past, uh, connectivity may have uh, been delayed because of either cost or perceptions of reliability, but today much of that is behind us. Um, uh, the cost is, it's quite a cost effective for most applications today, um, and the, the reliability is really quite good these days. So why is that? Is that just just because the, the tech got better? Well, it's, it's, we've, over the past 20 or 25 years, uh, engineers and scientists have really uh, got a lot more um, experience with wireless and pushed it to where we didn't think it could go 20 or 30 years ago. Um, so uh, there's no one wireless technolo technology that fits all applications, um, but if you can define the application, then you can choose a wireless technology that really works for it. And in some cases that may be uh, super high performance, and so you might want uh, a cellular technology like 5G, or you might want Wi-Fi 6. Both of these are, are you know, cutting edge technologies focused on performance. But in some cases, you might not want performance. Maybe you want uh, robust connectivity, or maybe you want long range, or maybe you want ultra low power, or maybe you want ultra low cost, or some combination of these. And so then you're, you might, another technology may be more appropriate. So like in the IoT, and in, in what we call the massive IoT, where you would be putting connectivity into sensors that are relatively inexpensive, um, we don't necessarily use the high performance technologies like 5G or Wi-Fi 6. Uh, in, the, in these cases, we might use uh, a low power wide area networking technology, also known as LP-WAN. Um, and these are, these are uh, wireless modules that you can add to a project, to a product and it typically could be, it could be as cheap as say $2 or maybe into the teens of dollars, still relatively cheap connect connectivity. Um, and, and, they, and they have very long range and they're, they're lower performance, but performance is often not needed in the IoT. When you're just pinging a temperature sensor, you know, maybe a dozen times a day or maybe even less, uh, performance is not really an issue and there you're more concerned about um, like for instance ultra low power consumption so that you can run a device on a battery for multiple years at a time which is really not possible with cellular technology or wi-fi um, so it really it really just depends it's there's kind of an art to matching a technology with an application to get a good match and uh, the industry's gotten much better at that in in recent years and so uh, if, if you can do that well you can 
make wireless uh, very robust and very very cost effective. So does Edge have a role here? Uh, the, nearly everything I do is on the Edge. Uh, <laughs> you live on the Edge? Yeah, <laughs> really. Um, wireless connectivity is really an Edge phenomenon. We don't, you don't see a lot of wireless connectivity in, in data centers or, 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 or enterprise networks except for like connecting Edge devices. Um, so uh, yeah, everything I do is, is pretty much on the edge. All of the I IoT applications uh, that I'm involved in and that I follow are, are the edge. So yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all edge related. So, so what's hot in IoT these days? Well, there's a lot of things. IoT is a pretty hot area right now. Um, there's some of the hot topics. Um, are related to some of these high performance technologies. For instance, 5G is a very hot topic uh, just across the tech industry right now. And uh, 5G IoT uh, applications are kind of interesting. Uh, like uh, some of the applications that are, that are mentioned over and over again for 5G are uh, like um, remote medical procedures. Remote, for instance, you might have, uh, you might have a, a patient undergoing a robotic surgical procedure in Seattle, but the but the doctor, the best doctor for that procedure is located in New York, and so we're 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 getting very close to the point where uh, that kind of remote surgery is a common everyday thing, and um, uh, other application other other instances are uh, like industrial automation. Um, quite often, um, for some of the mi mission critical types of industrial processes, you need very uh, uh, low latency uh, to, m to make it a, a very fast interactive process. Right. And so, some, again, something like 5G, that, which promises sub millisecond lat latency, is is perfect for that for that kind of solution. So, so you mentioned healthcare. I'm sure you saw yeah. the, the Mayo Clinic key keynote this morning. Yes. Uh, where where uh, we're, we're looking at the, the basically the future of healthcare and the, yeah. the future hospital. Do you buy into that whole concept? Yeah, I do. I thought that was a very good keynote. He talked about a lot of the areas that are very um, hot right now. And yeah, wireless is definitely moving into healthcare. It's, it's one of the, um, I, I think we can, it's safe to, to say that wireless is kind of an emerging phenomenon in healthcare. Uh, it has been there for a while and a few applications that uh, but it's, it's starting to get to where that almost anything uh, that's related to consumer healthcare is likely to have wireless connectivity. Um, we're already seeing that in some cases with, um, with some health-related devices like fitness trackers, um, sometimes uh, temperature sensor patches. For instance, you can, you can get temperature patches for, a, for an infant. Uh, so if you have an infant with a fever, you can put a temperature patch on the infant and monitor that with your phone uh, while while he's sleeping, for instance. So you can see exactly what the what the temperature is, and if there's, you know, if it reaches a certain point, maybe it's time to call the doctor, whatever. Um, but there's a lot going on in healthcare. Um, some really interesting er areas that have the potential for affecting literally hundreds of millions of lives for the better. Uh, one of these would be in uh, dealing with. Um, Low blood, uh, low blood sugar related diseases like diabetes. Um, in the past, um, monitoring low blood or monitoring blood sugar has been a very manual procedure, an open loop kind of procedure, where uh, quite often you're sticking, you're pricking your finger and and putting it on a right. on a piece of paper and comparing it. You know, so it's it's relatively low tech, but but nowadays we have. Uh, the promise of continuous glucose monitoring, or CGM, where uh, an electronic sensor monitors your glucose levels and can then send that data to uh, a processor that controls an insulin pump, and so you have a closed loop feedback system. And I've heard parents that, are, that have, for instance, kids that are affected by diabetes, parents say that you know, it's, it's, it's just a normal routine for them to wake up once or even twice at night to check blood sugar levels and adjust them if necessary. Um, but continuous glucose monitoring makes that something that can be done automatically 
And today that's done with, uh, with a wireless solution in many cases to connect the, the sensor to the, to, the, to the insulin pump. And quite often that's a, that's a technology like Bluetooth Low Energy. So it's a very, it's a very robust, very common technology. It also enables consumers to connect to it from their um, mobile devices because right. Bluetooth is one of the radios that's in every mo mobile device. And so, so besides healthcare, are there other other IoT hot sector industries? Yeah, the, uh, in the IoT, one of the one of the biggest areas for IoT right now is in in, in industrial cases. Um, so there's. A lot of cases where you have um, like remote equipment, um, or remote sensors, remote actuators that you want to control from a distance, um, and maybe it's in an area that does not have cellular coverage, so they have to use a different technology. So there's a, it, it's you get into a lot of cases where um, it's a pretty difficult problem to solve, um, but it's but it's worth it because the 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 value of the data you know, is, is, is pretty high in, in many cases. So, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to, 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 to highlight specific areas where, where the IoT is, is really happening because it's really happening everywhere. Um, there's hardly any industry that hasn't already been impacted by uh, the IoT. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, thank you.